So, uh, you, are you filming? Okay. So we went out to uh, dinner last night and just had some amazing buffalo wings and our waiter came up and I asked if I could pray for her. She had uh, pain in her feet so we prayed and all the pain left and then she said that she broke her foot when she was uh, younger and it never healed right. So we prayed for her and God actually reset the bone in her foot and she got completely healed. We prophesied over and she just got, just rocked by the love of God. become tangible that it'll be something experienced not just a theology or something we believe but I pray tonight that you just open up an encounter a baptism of your love God Thank you, Father. that you'll fill our hearts God that you just compel us with love God yes, that you'd overwhelm us with your love God I just thank you I praise you Lord you're amazing God just thank you for the grace that's being released tonight Lord. in Jesus name So this morning I was talking about when I uh, worked at Walmart, I was a door greeter and people just started getting healed coming through the door. Mm -hmm. And like God started giving me words. And I remember there's uh, another guy who was a door greeter too and he had bad arthritis in his leg. And at this time I'm like trying to gauge how much faith I need or this or that, you know. So I'm praying for his leg and trying to gauge how much faith I need to see him get healed. I prayed, 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 nothing happened. And then all of a sudden for like a month, I didn't see anybody get healed. And I'm like, wait, I just was seeing like an explosion of miracles left and right. And then I'm like, maybe I broke it. <laughs> maybe God took it away, you know. And um, it was really, really crazy, though, because um, a, little, a little while later, like uh, we, my wife and I were walking through Salvation Army. Do you guys have those out here? Yes. Yeah, okay. We're walking through a Salvation Army. And um, there's this lady, and she just looks like she's on some hardcore drugs, bags under her eyes, and she's walking like this, you know. And it was funny because I, I looked at her, and my instant, like, my heart kind of condemned her. I was like, wow, she's on something, you know. And then we're leaving, and she's sitting on the curb right next to our car. Uh -huh. And it's funny because my first thought was like, we were actually in a, we were in a bad area, so I'm like thinking, wow, we're going to get robbed tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of slide by her, slowly get to the car, and the Holy Spirit's like, give her a Bible. Yeah. Wow. That's that whole conviction I've been talking about, just yeah. instant convicted, because all of a sudden I realized I was sitting there judging her when God yes. wanted to love her. Yes. All right. Wow, all right. wow. All right. So I, I just said, hey, I feel like God wants me to give you this, and I handed her a Bible, and she breaks down crying. Mm. And she's just been going through a rough time, and she starts telling me how she got hit by a tow truck, and her back got disaligned so she can't walk right. And my heart broke for her, and she was just going through all these struggles with other stuff. And my heart broke for her, and it was crazy, because this is one of the few times I, I like prayed with no faith. I did not believe she was going to be healed at all, you know? I was just like so gripped with compassion and love for this lady, I had to pray. So I'm praying and I'm just like, just Lord, I just pray that thank you for healing her back in Jesus' name. And next thing you know, she gets up, she's all, what'd you do to me? And she starts walking normal and I'm like just as freaked out as she is. 
<laughs> like what? <laughs> like seriously? So it's funny, I like I talk to God a lot about stuff. It's a good habit to get into, you know? Yes, it is. So I was just praying about that. I'm like I didn't really have faith. I prayed for her. What, what made the difference? And then God took me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Thanks. See, there's this huge debate on the law where he's just like jumping on it, right? And right here he, in verse 6, he says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Mm -hmm. So the uncircumcision points to the law, which that's like talking about works, you know? We're trying to work. I was trying to find the formula to get people healed. My God. But God was showing me faith operates through love, period. Wow. See, when we really love the person in front of us, we're going to see a lot more breakthrough. That's right. See, that's why Jesus, he was like moved with compassion. And it's funny, like when I when I first started really walking in this stuff, like I started studying people who were walking in it. Because I figured, you know, they might be doing something right if they're able to walk in power, you know. So I looked at uh, Heidi Baker's ministry and started listening to her teachings. And I got annoyed at first because it'd be like, love, 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 love. I'm like, okay, I get that. What's next, you know? <laughs> and then the only thing she talks about is love and intimacy with God. And then other people like Todd White, he's talking about becoming love and becoming this gospel. And just living in righteousness and purity. I'm just like listening to this, and this is. But this message of love is something I see. Is like everyone who's really walking in God's heart and walking in God's power. They're walking in this thing called love. You know. Right. One night I was uh, actually fasting and praying. I was like, God, what's the most important thing to you? And I was searching the Bible because. You know, I want to be after God's heart, but I want to know his heart. I want to know what he cares about, you know? Yeah. 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 I want to align myself with God's heart. I don't want God just to answer my prayers to do whatever. I, I, I want to be God's heart on this earth. I want to be like him. I want to know him, you know? So that's been my heart's cry all along. And one night, I, I, you know how you read something in the Bible and you just feel the presence just hit you when you read it? It's like it has grace on it. Yes. God took me to Isaiah 58, and I just felt just God's presence on it. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, Isaiah 58. This, this is interesting right here. I'll start from the beginning, because this, uh, this is really important to get. It says, Cry out loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression. Tell the house of Jacob their sins. So he, right here in this first part, he's talking about addressing of sin of Israel, what they're doing wrong. He said, yet they seek me daily as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. So he's saying, look, you're doing all these works that are good. You're doing, you know, you're delighting in seeking me. You're delighting in this. You're delighting in your prayer time. You're actually delighting in wanting to see my justice. And you're begging me for justice, you know. It says, they, they delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you've not seen? Why have we afflicted our soul and you did not take notice? <laughs> So they're sitting there trying to do all these works, trying to fast, trying to beat themselves up, trying to do everything they can to get God to answer them, yet they're not seeing an answer from God. They're not seeing breakthrough. All right. Now check this out. It says, in fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You exploit your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and, with, and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you did this day to make your voice heard on high. Mm. So, wow. That, that's crazy. And then he says, is this the fast I've chosen for a day for a man to afflict his soul, to bow down his head like a bulrush, to spread out a sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Mm. Now, let me paint a picture of that. Oh, Lord, I'm so unworthy. Oh, Lord, if you would just please, 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 you know, we get in a habit of beating ourselves up, begging God, calling ourselves unworthy, you know, 
and we get a habit of trying to afflict ourselves and then we look at other people who are not and we're like, oh, well, you're not doing it, you know? And it becomes a source of judgment and it's actually a wickedness. The Bible condemns it right there. See, that was an issue the Pharisees constantly fell in because they were doing the law. They actually weren't doing the law. They just forgot something. It's love. Yeah. And Jesus was love wow. manifest, and they had no idea who he was. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Right. 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 Come on. Wow, wow. So, now back to, I was trying to find a formula for faith. How much faith do I need to see this person healed when God's saying it's not about that? Right. You see, I you can't work this thing up. You see, when I'm not saying prayer, we need prayer, we need Bible, we need to press in diligently, but we need to know Him. See, we're not trying to twist God's arm to get Him to do something. We're trying to get to know Him so we be, could become like Him, so we can manifest Him everywhere we go. Glory, say it, be Holy Spirit. Yep. Yep. Goodness. Now check this out. I, I love this. It's verse 6. It says, Is this not the fast I've chosen? To loose bonds of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Glory to God. Who does that kind of sound like? That sounds like Jesus almost, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? Is it not to bring in your house the poor who are cast out? And when you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh. So right there, it's just pinning it on love. Yeah. He's saying, look, you guys are delighting in asking me for justice to be served. You're delighting in this. You're delighting in that. But at the same time, your hearts are bitter towards one another, and you're forgetting this thing called love. Mm -hmm. All right. See, it's that place of love. God really answers you. Yes. Yes. Like, I'm finding when I'm overwhelmed with love for people, I see way more breakthrough. All right. And here's the thing. It says in Romans 5.5, 5, love's been poured out on our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He's given us. Yeah. So love is a product of knowing Him. Amen. The more we know Him, the more we become like Him, and He is love. Yeah. Yeah. He is love. Glory. Yeah. Glory. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. See, check this out. Verse 8. It says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning and your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard when you're walking in love your righteousness will go before you and God's glory will back you up isn't that amazing oh my god If you take away the yoke, oh wait, no, here in verse 9, then you shall call and the Lord will answer. He will cry and he'll say, here I am. Uh -huh. They're wondering right before that, God, why aren't you hearing us? I've been to a lot of prayer meetings where people are crying out to God and screaming out to God and they think the more hyped up and emotional they get, they think that is faith. See, emotion and faith are two different things. We should be passionate all in. I'm talking on fire, passionate, in love with God with all our emotion. Yeah. See, we should be excited for God with all our emotion, but how emotionally attached we are to an outcome does not mean we have faith in the outcome. All right. I, I, I know it, it's easy when faith speaks to the mountain, the mountain moves, period. Yeah. That's the evidence of faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could get emotionally attached to something or in a frenzy, you see, and tell something to move, but if it doesn't move, you're, it's it's emotion, which that's not bad. We're, we're, God made us emotional. He's emotional. Read the Psalms. <laughs> God's amazing, you know? He's yeah. not apathetic. Yeah. I love that about God. He's passionate. He, he's love manifest. But isn't, isn't that just such a beautiful passage? It says, you'll cry and he'll say, here I am. If you're living your life yeah. to love others, if you're actually living your life just to be a blessing to the world around you, to love others, he's going to back you up. His glory is going to back you up. And he's going to answer you. You're going to hear from him. He, you're going to hear his heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise so good. God. It says, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn the darkness, and your darkness shall 
Oh, I know. Back up. In verse 9, it says, If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness, so that points to the issue before, that we're condemning each other, like, well, I'm more holy than you. I'm doing all this, and I've been fasting three days, and you're eating a cheeseburger, and, <laughs> you know? <laughs> See, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And those from among you shall build the old waste places and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets yeah. to dwell in. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes. 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 Wow. Speak Holy Spirit. See, that's prophetic for Christ. But that's prophetic for Christ in us. Yeah. Yeah. See, Jesus in me is a repairer of the breach. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus in me is the restorer of the streets to dwell in. Amen. But here's the thing. When, when we're walking in love, and that's our goal, that's our life, we actually are living out this gospel, what it says, it's going to bring life to everywhere we're at. We're going to be a blessing everywhere we're at, and it's going to restore ruins. Yeah. Thank you, John. And it's funny, after I read this passage, like I said, I felt, I, it took me a while to unpack it, because sometimes God will give you something and you think you have it, but then there's more and there's more, there's more, there's more. It, this Bible's infinite. Right. <laughs> it's, it, the Holy Spirit's got infinite revelation in this thing, you know? Yes. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. But, so I went to sleep and I made a mistake. I forgot to set my alarm clock and I had to work at 7 in the morning. Have you guys ever done that? <laughs> Everybody's done that at least once. If not, you should try it, just so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so I forget to set my alarm clock, and I go to sleep, and then I just wake up in God's presence in tents. I'm talking like God's presence filled my room tangibly. I'm like... Phew. And then I wake up one minute before my alarm clock went off, and my alarm clock didn't go off, pretty much. Wow. I was just like, what? You know, and then as soon as I got up, I'm all wide awake, and Holy Spirit's like, close your eyes. <laughs> but I just woke up, God. <laughs> so I woke up, I closed my eyes, and I see this homeless dude who's grungy, has a jean jacket, and you could tell him... To, like, uh, I couldn't smell in the vision, but I imagine he was probably smelly, you know? And... In the vision, I gave him a hug and all this rainbow light started just coming off him. And then God just spoke really clear. He said, that's my heart. Mm, wow. Glory it's love. Glory. Amen. And then I just, Isaiah 58 just started echoing in my heart. Glory just that. So, so that's been kind of like one of those life passages to me, you know? But that's God's heart is that we become his love to the world around us. Amen. He gave us his spirit to empower us to do so. The gospel is amazing. Now, one thing with witnessing is like lo love. A lot of people, I think, they have a twisted understanding of what love is. You know, they don't really get it. They, it's kind of like love sounds like this fluffy word that people. Yeah, love. I, I've told people, I'm like, you know, Jesus loves you, and believers will get offended if you say that sometimes because they don't get that. It's like, yeah, I know that. No, you don't understand. <laughs> like this love is everything yeah. Jesus loved us so much he gave everything for us see that is the purest picture of love and here's something powerful about love see God wanted to defeat all the works of darkness in one shot and he didn't use screaming he didn't use hollering he didn't use fast he, he did it on the cross yeah one act of love just stomped out the devil every work. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now. Hallelujah. That's why John 12, by soon the rule of this world will be cast out. He's referring to his work on the cross. Okay. Took away. The devil has no more authority, period. Jesus took it. He has it. <laughs> but it was done through one act of love. So love is actually one of the power, most powerful tools that we have against the darkness. All right. All right. Amen. See, and it's funny because people who are living in darkness, 
when they start feeling or experiencing true love, they may fight it, fight against it at first, but it's such a contrast to what they're living in. Yes. See, if the devil is called the accuser of brethren. Someone who's in the world that's following after him is constantly accused and condemned in their mind constantly. Because the devil doesn't like peace. He doesn't like people to have peace. And people following after him don't receive peace from him. Amen. He doesn't know peace. He doesn't know love. Like the devil, he has no love, you know? Wow. So people following him don't know this stuff, but once they start experiencing it, they might fight against you. They might yell. They might cuss you out. They might, whatever they do. But if they really start experiencing love, it's going to cause a contrast. They're going to see there's something different. I, I remember uh, my wife and I were on a date and we're just walking through a uh, Clackamas Town Center. And um, it's, it, I'll, I'll start from the beginning of this because uh, we, this was a time where we're like, okay, we're going to, on a date, no ministry. We're just going on a date. Period. You know? I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, we're standing in line at Starbucks, and then <laughs> some guy comes limping like this and walks in the line, and he's standing there, and I notice it, and I'm like, we're on a date. I'm not ministering. <laughs> so, I just ignore it, and then Holy Spirit had to give me an obvious word. Of Holy Spirit's like, right hip? <laughs> As if I didn't see it. <laughs> Holy Spirit, he's got a sense of humor. He's funny. I love God. But Holy Spirit's like, uh, right hip. And I'm like, obviously, you know, so I told Chelsea, I'm like, I gotta pray for this guy. She's like, did God tell you? I said, yeah. So, <laughs> so I woke up and I'm like, hey, what happened? Do you have a problem with your right hip? He said, yeah, I threw it off line. I'm like, let me see your hand. Let's check this out. And we just prayed over him. And he's like completely better. He's like, wow, thanks, you know. So now I'm back to the date. No more ministry. <laughs> so we go, we go sit, uh, to the bathrooms around the food. Like uh, there's a food court, and then there's bathrooms like right over, like uh, in the corner with all these nice, comfy couches and stuff. So I'm sitting down waiting for Chelsea, and I'm sitting down. And there's this guy who's just sitting there glaring at people, all angry, you know, and. There's like two kids on the other couch that are like making out, and then he's kind of like just glaring at them. And I look at him like, dude, how are you doing? He said, if they were from where I'm from, they'd be hanged. I'm like, well, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> he's all, Georgia. He has like a really thick accent. <laughs> and, and I look at him like, dude, I'm like, this is kind of random, but, uh, and I just made small talk, and I'm like, this is kind of random, but do you have any pain in your body? And he started laughing, he's like, do I ever? He said, I, I have half my lungs missing, I had a grenade go off, and, the, and this and that, and he got shot and stabbed, and he's telling me all this stuff that happened, and I'm like, dude, can I pray? He, can I pray for you? He looks at me and goes, I don't believe in prayer. And then all this anger just rose up. And, and I just looked, and it was weird, because like, when you're in the presence of God, like stuff like that does not startle you. Like here's the thing, God's presence is so powerful it defies the understanding. Because he was angry at me and he was offended, but I felt this love and peace just rise up in me and it created a boldness where I just looked at him and said, dude, no, seriously, let, let me just bless you. I don't care what you believe. And I tell people, I'm not asking you to believe what I believe. I just want to bless you because when the Holy Spirit shows up, it doesn't matter. Right. Uh. So he's like, fine, if it'll make you feel better. <laughs> I'm like, well, it will. <laughs> so I, I lay my hands on him and I, I pray for him to be healed. And the craziest thing happens. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit hits him. And he breaks down just crying. And then he tells me how he was stationed somewhere in uh, northern Africa. And a little kid sh shot him with a gun. And he turned around and ended up killing a little kid. And he's been condemning himself over it. And he basically told me, he said, there's no chance of my salvation. Started telling me how he's just under all this condemnation. Mm -hmm. Wow. He's just beating himself up, you know, and he's just like saying he's condemned. He's destined to hell because he shot a little kid. And I'm just like moved with compassion. So I shared how Paul persecuted Christians in the Bible. And I used, I told him my own testimony. Wow. 
you know, I came out of some, I, I was just into some crazy stuff, you know, and God loved me, so that, that rules just about everybody in. <laughs> so, so I told him my testimony, he actually like got hit by that. He's like, wow, that actually happened to you? I said, well, look, let me pray for your lungs one more time because he's missing half his lung. Remember that? So I'm going to let me pray for your lungs. And he looks at me and goes, look, God's not going to heal my lungs. You're not going to heal my lungs. There's nothing you could do to get my lungs back. I'm like, awesome. Lord, Father, I just thank you. For, I just thank you for brand new lungs. And then all of a sudden he goes, ah, starts screaming and grabbing his chest. And I'm like looking for security. Like, oh man, I just caused this dude a heart attack. I'm like, what's going on? This dude's like screaming, you know, and he's holding his heart like around his heart. And I'm like freaking out because I'm like, oh man, this is going to be so bad. Security's going to come up and they're going to be like, oh, Christian kills someone through prayer. <laughs> I'll be on the newspaper. <laughs> That'd be really hard to minister if you have that, you know? You'd be like, hey, can I pray for you? No, you're that dude who killed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he's grabbing his chest screaming, and I look at him, I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> what, are you what, are you feeling heat in your chest? He said, yeah, my lungs are on fire. I'm like, oh, okay, that's just God. He's giving you new lungs. <laughs> About a minute into two minutes into screaming, he all of a sudden takes this deep breath and goes, <gasps> So, whoa. He said, I haven't breathed that deep in years. And now he starts really breaking down crying. Because his lungs are back. See, love invades. See, this is the love of God manifest. And it's powerful. It's not weak. It's not, you know, it's it's aggressive love. Yeah. Yeah. Not aggressive in the way we know it in the worldly sense, but the reality is God loves him so much that he's not going to let him go. Yeah. So he gets up and he's crying. He's like, man, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. I'm like, where's your bullet wounds? He said, no, no, you can't pray for that. He said, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. This is the guy who was just yelling at me, saying he doesn't want prayer. And now he's crying, saying I don't deserve this, because he encountered the love of God. So we pray over his legs. His legs get healed. We pray over, and I just put my hand on his back, start praying over his back. He said, I didn't tell you about my back. I didn't tell you about my back. He had no feeling in this arm. We pray for this, and then the feeling came back in his arm because he had a bullet wound through his shoulder. See, and here's the thing. This is God's love manifest for him. And I didn't want to put my name on this one. So I told him, I said, hey, man, God bless you. And I asked him, I said, do you want, to, do you want this Jesus to live in your heart? He said, Jesus, I'm yours. Amen. And he gave his life to the Lord right there. Me and Chelsea were walking away just bawling, crying, like, God, is so good. <laughs> <laughs> on a date. <laughs> on a date. God, God had to interrupt our date. So is love. Hallelujah. Yes. But here, so here's the thing. This guy's in darkness. He told me he was trying to drink himself to death. That was his whole hope. Can you imagine living in that place where your only hope is that this alcohol finally takes your life? Where you're in that much condemnation to where you actually believe and are convinced that there's no hope. That God can never forgive you because of the stuff you've done. There's a lot of people out there that's like that. That needs a real touch from God. Who needs something more than be blessed and be filled and be merry. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, people need a real touch from God. And this guy was in so much condemnation, so much darkness. And here's the thing. It was manifesting in anger towards others. Yeah. See, a lot of people that are angry out there, they're upset, they're mad, but really they're holding on to so much hurt and so much condemnation and so much pain. And the only way to help them is love, period. You check this out. It was Valentine's Day, about a month later, right? We're walking through, and then I see this same exact guy. He's sitting there, and we found out that his response to encountering God's love was, I need to find a church now. So he found a church, and instead of saying, Josh and Chelsea pray for me, he gave his testimony to the whole church, and he said, God sent two people. 
So God took all the credit for that, which is just amazing, you know? But here's something else that's amazing. He said since that, he's actually got into school to be a, a, like bed, like a, a doctor's assistant or something. And he, he wants to work with vets that come out of the war and minister to them. And he wow. said he feels like that's a ministry God's calling to him. So his, that encounter shifted his mind to showing other people who are vets, who's been injured in war, who's in that same place of condemnation, the love of God that he encountered. And he, though he had feeling in his arm, we found out the bullet was still in his arm. Wow. So I felt it. You could feel this bump sticking out like that far. So we pray and actually feel the bullet go just disappear. Wow. Completely Glory gone. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's, see, that's love. And here's the thing. When, when we really get his heart, when we, when we have that heart to love others, we could go to a place and we could just look around like, who, who needs to be blessed? Who needs to be touched? You know? It could be something as little as handing a dollar to a homeless guy on the street or something as little as giving a hug to a person who needs it at the right time. Yeah. You know, just something. But here's the thing. When we, when we start loving people in a real tangible way, it has an effect and it changes things. Amen. Amen. See, that's our strongest spiritual warfare. It's just love. Period. And love holds nothing against people, too. See, like, we gotta get this. That's the heart of the gospel. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. See, He loved us when we were yet sinners. Yeah. See, when we were wretched, miserable, lost, without hope, without Him, He sent His Son and said, "I want that one." Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. 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 See, it's out of that love that we can love others freely. Yeah. You see, I, I'm convinced that you could love your love for other people was in proportion to the love you received from the Father. Yeah. Yes. So as you start understanding God's love and how much God actually loves you, you could start loving others in the same way. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See, I, I know a lot of people they like try to love others in their own strength and they'll try to bless others but they really don't love themselves and they don't believe God loves them you know and their love for others is just is trying to find a security and trying to find something else you know yeah, yeah. and and that's amazing I love people like that you know but they need to encounter God's love for them too it's twofold you know yeah. we get filled with his love and overwhelmed and then we love others Hallelujah. And here's the thing, God is love, so you every encounter with God is going to impart more love into you. When you encounter God, the fruit of it is going to be love, period. Amen. I want you to turn actually first to Ephesians. Chapter 3, verse 16. So Paul's praying for the uh, church of Ephesus and the saints in Ephesus. And he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness, fullness of God. Did, did you catch that? He's praying for them to understand the depth of God's love so they could be filled with His fullness. Hallelujah. Now, I've been talking about how we've been right, made right with God. He settled it. We've been made right. He gave us His righteousness so we could be in right standing with God. I talked about how He paid the price and His blood's powerful enough to perfect our conscience towards God. Amen. See, that's a place of receiving love. Glory to God. You know? It's like, God's in love with me. He loves me, seriously. And I actually believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cool because I don't have this thing in my heart anymore condemning me or showing me where I fell short or this or that. I can freely receive His love. Yeah. 
And out of that place, I'm able to love others. And when I go places, I look for people to love because I know him. He lives in me. Glory to God. And it's, it's easy. I can't. You can't fake this thing. Love comes from God, period. The more you know Him, the more you're going to love others because He is love. Hallelujah. Now check this out. Go to... um. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Verse 37 it says, Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yeah. For I am persuaded that yeah. neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing that could separate you from God. Yeah. And this is a side note. I, I think this is for somebody here, but the, I, I know this is a trick the devil likes to play a lot of times. Like, you know the whole, the one unpartable sin, the whole blasphemy of the Spirit? See, one trick the devil likes to do is you'll get, be right before you get to that passage, all of a sudden you'll hear all these thoughts blaspheming the Spirit. Has anyone had that happen to them? Okay, and then you read that passage, and then next you know the devil's like, oh, see, you just committed that. See, that's the devil's thought. It's not yours. It's not in your heart. If that, if that was you, I just want you to know God loves you. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. If, if you truly blaspheme the Holy Spirit, your heart would be hardened from ever wanted, wanting Him. Amen. It's like God draws people to Him, right? Yes. You wouldn't even want forgiveness. You wouldn't want to repent, period. There would be no desire in your heart for God if that was true. Right. So if you desire God, trust me, He didn't do it. Right. See, God loves you. Hallelujah. He's head of heels in love with you. Thank you, Lord. I don't, I don't know who that was for. I just felt like I really needed to say that. So, but, oh, God is so amazing. He's He's radical love. And here's the thing: we can't fake love. Love has to look like something. Amen. Love requires us to do something, to act on something. See, you know the whole faith without works is dead passage see it, it's you can read that in a really twisted sense you know where it's faith without works is dead and so you're like okay I gotta read my bible or else I have no faith or I gotta pray or I have to the whole thing he's talking about is love Amen. I'm gonna turn to there actually just to make that point more clear And James uh, 2, verse 14. says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says, Depart in peace, be warm and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus, also faith by itself, if, it's not, if it doesn't have works, it's dead. So the example for not faith, your faith not having works, is actually an act of love. That's what he's using there. Right. See, when we truly believe and we have faith in the love God has in us, it's going to create fruit. We're going to act on it. Amen. It's good. Amen. Check this out. Uh, turn to First John chapter 3. Verse 16 says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoever has this world's good and sees his brother in need and shuts his heart from him, how does he love the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word but in, or in tongue, but in deed and truth. See, there's an action. When you love someone, it's going to cause you to do something. Just like Paul was compelled to preach the gospel because he was so, he was compelled by love. He understood the reality that Jesus paid a price for everybody. Yeah. 
No one's left out. He, his blood covers the world. He took the sin of the world, not just the sin of the elect or the sin of the few. The sin of the world was on the cross. And it says in his book that he desires all to be saved. It says again in Peter, 2 Peter, that he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. See, that's my God. He lives in me. So we need to have that same heart. And that heart becomes manifest when we start loving people. That's the only commandment he gave us. That. He said, love others like I loved you. Well, how did he love us? He gave everything for us. He laid down his life for us. Yeah. What, if, what would it look like if we even got a piece of that heart for the world around us? Already got See, and it's that, it's that love that could change a city. It's that love that could transform a neighborhood. It's that love that we've seen drop crime rates in areas. Yeah. Yeah. We've actually seen just going places and loving on people. We've actually seen gangs leave parks. We've seen like a lot of demonic bondage actually flee from areas because we keep going back and loving on people ministering and we've seen the hard hearts just start getting more open and more open and more open but it all starts by going and you have, you have to put this to work you have to do something with this yeah it's the gospel yeah yes. that's it yeah see and here's the thing we're not working to it obtain something we're working because we have attained something i have god living in me i work from that place yeah. that's called grace grace is the operational power of god right amen like, like i said I, I believe it was friday maybe it, grace the the word in the greek is harris which means the divine influence on the heart and its expression throughout the life amen. so what it means is god sets up camp in here he changes my heart and my heart starts be beating with his love it starts being filled with it and it starts manifesting through my actions amen. so it changes my life and then it starts changing everything around me amen. that's the grace that we've been given and we could grow in it hallelujah see when we work just like the talents you know people have been given talents that We've been given a portion of grace, and when we start living in that place of grace and we start using it, it grows. It increases. Oh, it's so good. Now, now, I've been talking about a relationship with God. See, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God. And I've repeated that passage a lot, but that's just like burning on my heart. Like, we have to know Him, period. That's now, do you remember in Isaiah 58, it said, Then you will call, and I'll say, Here I am. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Actually, in John chapter 15, verse 9, As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. So God loves you. There's a place where you start abiding in His love for you, and it starts manifesting. You start receiving His love. You start enjoying and delighting yourself in the Lord. Now check this out. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. When you love others, you abide in His love. See, His commandment is love. So when you start loving others, you actually abide in Christ's love. So it goes back and forward, you know? And right there, He separates His commandment from His Father's commandments. He says, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. So he says, look, I abided in my Father's commandments, which is the Torah, which is the 613 laws. He's like, I abided under that so you could abide under my commandment. Mm -hmm. Now check this out. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. Wow. Greater love has known than this than to lay down one's life for yes, his friends. Yes, yes. Amen. So we need... We need to be possessed with this thing. Like straight up possessed by the Holy Spirit. Possessed by love. I know that word sounds extreme, but that's what I'm after. That's what I want. I want people, to, when they encounter me, I want them to see Jesus everywhere. Amen. But can you imagine being able to love like that? Being able to just lay down your life freely for anyone. Just, just to selflessly love like that. That's the heart of the gospel. Amen. That's the God we serve. Says you, he's, now check this out. He says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. What do you just command us? Love. So loving others brings us into a friendship with God. So 
Jesus gives us one commandment, love others. When we actually start loving others, it brings us in a friendship with God. And that's the place we start hearing God. We start hearing His heart. Yeah. We start hearing His intentions for people. Right. See, it, right here it says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant yeah. does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. Friend. Yeah. For all things I've heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Hallelujah. Now, back to the servant mentality. He contrasts a servant and a friend. Right? Now here's the thing. We could try to work for God and we could try to do all these things and pray and do all these things and yout, shout and holler and, and really we're trying to we have this servant mind frame or a slave mind frame because we're like, hey, we got to do all these things and do all these things to get God to be happy with us, to get God to love us, to get a God to do this. But in the new covenant we get to be his friends. All right. Not Not he doesn't call us servants. He calls us friends. Right. See, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm a servant of God because of my convictions is to follow Him regardless. Yeah. But it's a choice. It's not a taskmaster. Yeah, yeah. But now, did you catch that part though? He said, I have called you friends for the things I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. So out of that place of friendship, we start hearing the intent of God. We start hearing His plans. We start hearing His heart for other people. Yeah. I think that right there is also the core of prophecy. Like when you're prophesying over people on the street or people in the stores or people everywhere, it's actually just hearing God's heart for people. Right. God really loves people, you know? He said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Amen. Now there's something really awesome because he just said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'll give you. Yeah. But he's talking about love in that context. When you're loving selflessly, whatever you ask in my name, you'll receive it. Oh, it's going to happen. See, remember that lady who was walking like this. I prayed for her out of that place of love, and she got healed. Now faith operates through love. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. See, and... Like, here, here's another thing, too. Like... I know a lot of people like are really good scripture quoters and it's kind of like we say the word as if it's a formula to get what we want and I know like a lot of movements kind of has this okay we got to quote this promise and this promise and this promise and if you quote these promises every day it's gonna there's a condition there love yeah. when you start loving people and when you start actually living this gospel out you actually position yourself for those promises to become manifest you don't even have to ask them they're a result of that position yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, everyone knows uh, Romans 8 28 for I know all things work out for the good for those who love God and those who are called according to this purpose yeah. there's the condition those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose not all things work out for the good, but to those who love God and those who are called according to the purpose, all things are going to work out for the good. See, if you're living your life in selfless love, it doesn't matter if someone hurts you. It does because you don't. You no longer get hurt by people. You, you hurt for people. And that, that's a huge thing. That's some God shift in my heart. Like when. I've had friend, like people come against me. I've had a lot of crazy stuff, but it, it's what, one thing that's really shifted in my heart because of the work God's done in my life is I no longer get hurt by people. Yeah. But I just feel this compassion, this love, because they don't know this love yet. They don't know God like that yet. See, what if we had that towards everybody? Like, that's the beauty of the gospel. Thank you, Father. Uh, Turn to 1 John chapter 4. Uh, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Mm 
He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Yeah. See, Jesus said, by this all will know you're my disciples, by this love thing. And right here, he's saying, if you don't love, you don't know God. God is love. God is love. Now, uh, here's, here's something, like, everyone's like, everyone tries to add a balance. I've heard so many people try to add a balance to that because they think if you actually believe that passage that you're going to get out of balance. So, like, no, but God, remember, God also is a God of wrath, and He also gets angry, and He also... It doesn't say God is wrath anywhere. God has wrath, yeah. He hates anything that destroys humanity. If you look at the things he got wrathful of, they were sacrificing their children to idols. They were destroying themselves. They were just completely wicked, and he hated the defilement that was doing to people he loved. Yeah. Mm. God hates sin with a passion. He, he, he's against it. He hates it. But he doesn't hate it because he doesn't love uh, it or it's separate from like, this other side of his nature. He hates it because he loves us so much. He hates what that does to us. Amen. Amen. Sin gives the devil authority. And here's something too. You can't really cast some. You can't have authority over a devil you're serving through your lifestyle. That's good. Good. That's good. That's good. You can't. See, God's holy. He's amazing, and whatever He calls you to do, He'll give you the grace to do. He'll empower you to do. Amen. Right. Amen. Hmm. But right there it says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And in this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. See, remember, we died. Our life is hidden in Christ. Christ lives us, and that's my life. That's My life is hidden in Christ. Yeah. See, our spirit's infused with His spirit. We're born of God. We're a brand of creation. We're the firstborn of many brethren. It's funny, because we, we can't really use the excuse, oh, I'm just human. Because we're actually like God infused with man. Like God joined Himself in us. We're a brand new creation. That's so awesome. <laughs> See, and in this love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. That's beautiful. So that means when we're messed up, when we're unwanted, unlovable, when we're condemned in our mind, when our, we're in our worst state, God loves, already paid for our sins. God already demonstrated His love for us. Yes. See, one shot. Destroyed all the works of the devil in that one shot. Yeah. And it was that one act of love. And love is our most powerful warfare. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now, no one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love will be perfected in us. That's a promise right there. Amen. And there, there's the condition. When you find a promise in the Bible, there really is conditions. It says, if we love one another, God abides in us. And His love has been perfected in us. When you start loving, that's the perfection of God's love in us. Because love is poured out on our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And it yeah. starts manifesting. And by this, we know that we abide in Him. And He in us. Because He gave us His Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, I was just ranting and raving about this morning. See, He testifies of this love. He brings this love. The Holy Spirit gives us the empowerment to love others. And that's one thing with healing too. Like I believe healing firmly connects to the love of God. Um, healing does, it does confirm the gospel. That's its main purpose you see in the Bible, but I believe it's it's deeper than that. Because there's so many places where it said Jesus was moved with compassion and Jesus actually did miracles for people. He would say something that would offend him and they'd reject him right after. So he, he did miracles for people who would later yell crucify him. All right. Now think about this. Judas 
Of all people, I'd say that's like one of the ones highlighted in the Bible for being one of the worst, right? He washed his feet. And the night he washed his feet, he said, I know you're going to betray me. See, so his reaction, his response to Judas was love regardless, period. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, God is love. And it says Jesus is the image of the invisible God, right? In John, the beginning of John chapter 14, like Philip's like talking to him, he's like, show us the Father, you know, they're like, show us the Father, it'll, it'll be sufficient for us. He said, have you not, do you not know me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. See, Jesus is the image of God. He is what God looks like, what God talks like, what God acts like. And here's the thing, through the law, they did not know this God. It was a veil that blinded them. So they're under this workspace mentality trying to work for something and trying to conjure up. They, that blinds you from who he is. But when you really receive his love for you, you start seeing that and you live in that place. Then it starts manifesting through your life. And that's so good. Glory. But Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So he's what love looks like, what love talks like, and we're actually being transformed into his image. Now, I want you to turn uh, one more passage. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I quoted the first part of this this morning. It said, now the Lord is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God living in us. The Holy Spirit is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the Father. It's God with us. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, but we all with an unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So as we behold Him, as we see Him, as we fall in love with Him, as we get to know His love, we actually get transformed into His image. We become like Him, and we actually become God's love on this earth. I was talking about how we're His body. If God wants to touch something, He's going to use His hand. You know, if God wants to reach out to somebody, he's going to use one of you. And you see, when we're available to him, when we start realizing that, when we start living our life to love others, it positions us to be able to receive when he wants to touch someone. Amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to share one more testimony. I, I, I mentioned this girl covered in cuts from head to toe, I, I think, Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, and then Chelsea cast, just cast out that thing out of that one guy and just, like, blessed him and gave his life to the Lord. Well, the other side of that day, I, I walk up and there's these two guys ministering to this girl, and I didn't realize they were ministering at first, and there's just this heaven invades earth thing that's in the center of the city, which is cool. So, like, a lot of believers around, you know, and I just walk up, and I see her, and I just feel moved with compassion. This girl, like, has literally cuts all over her body where, like, I'm talking five-inch gash, gashes on all over her arms with stitches. Heavily demonized. We're talking to her, and she's manifesting, pulling her hair, and she's, like, just saying how she can't get over this urge to cut herself, and she's just freaking out, and, but she knows God's love, and, but there's all this bondage and stuff, and I start ministering to her, and then the other two guys talking to her are, like, completely spirit-filled, like, where they're just, like, amazing people. It's cool. When people are following, like, the Spirit and actually listening to the Spirit, you could just meet them and your ministry is not going to clash with their ministry. Amen. Amen. Wow. When we do it on our own strength and we have to do it our way in our own flesh, then your ministries could clash a little bit. But that's one thing I'm seeing. When people are Spirit-filled, I can, I can minister with pretty much any, like, with anybody who's walking in the Spirit or anyone. Like, you go around them and you start ministering, listening to the Spirit. You'll find out it's the same God they're serving. Amen. <laughs> you know, so we're ministering to this girl. We find out she has unforgiveness because her mom, I have, uh, she just went through some really, really hardcore abuse. And then her mom turned it around and said, it's your fault that happened to you. 
So in that place where she needs to experience that lo the love and the peace from a mother, it got denied and rejected. And she's just crying and she said, you know, I just want a family. And she was homeless on the street and we started praying with her and God kept sending believers around us. So next thing you know, we're like surrounded by all these believers who are starting to become our family right there on the street. So we talked to her. Um, she, she said, look, I'm bisexual, I'm not giving that up, I'm not giving this up, I'm not giving that up. But I do want to stop cutting. Okay, that's a start. And I told her, I said, look, I'm not going to tell you to get a, give up anything. I want you to know God. <clears throat> See, when people get to know the love of God, it changes them. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not talking about saying a prayer, I'm talking about really getting to know God. Yeah. It's not about a prayer, it's about a relationship. Amen. So I start talking to her, right? And I just love on her. And it was just it was just amazing because she's like just so like she starts perceiving it, and then the demonic comes, and then it was funny because I started just see, sensing in the spirit all this demonic coming around us, and I'm like praying against it, and she's like, Oh, it's from these necklaces, and she takes them off, puts them in her backpack. So we're talking to her and Chelsea and Amir are witnessing to like people like across the street or like kind of up the block, you know, and so they're away from us and we start ministering to her and then Chelsea and Amir come by and they both have like necklaces. Amir's got this bright pink flowery necklace and Chelsea had like a beautiful cross necklace and she and she looks, she goes, Wow, that's a pretty necklace. So Amir takes it off and says, Here, it's yours. And Chelsea said, you know, God's like telling me to give you this. So here, gives her the necklaces. So she grabs the necklaces out of her backpack and throws them away. So, so we literally sat with her for like three hours just loving on this girl and just ministering to her and finally we got her we, she wouldn't let us touch her she wouldn't let us pray but finally she let us pray over her and things start breaking and it was a process but then finally uh, he said God wants like this guy uh, I, I forgot his name but he was saying God wants to I believe God really wants to speak with you and she's like, okay, you know, she, or, well, at first she's like, I'm not ready for that, you know, she did not want that, but she was trying to get deliverance without giving her life, you know, yeah, yeah. or without wanting to let go of forgiveness or unforgiveness. So finally she closes her eyes and we're like, what do you see? She says, I see the color blue. I'm like, well, what does that mean to you? She said, that means hope. So God was speaking to her through color. Now, check this out. This is crazy. So she's hungry, and like I've been saying, love has to look like something. So I'm like, uh, I'm going through financial. At this time, I was going through like crazy bills and all this stuff, and I'm like, you know, I need to get you something to eat, you know, because you haven't eaten. So on the way there, there's this like flower shop with all these roses, and I'm like, I hear the Holy Spirit say, get her a rose. So I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, okay, which one's not romantic? Orange, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I had to buy my wife a rose too, you know, because I'm like, no, okay, God, I'll do it. But I got her a rose, and I said, look, this is from your father in heaven. And she breaks down crying because her daughter's name's Rose, and her daughter was taken from her. So, so that was God based, that was a sign to her that God said, I want to restore your family. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So... So we, we hang out with her and we just spend time with her and she just all of a sudden gets filled with joy and just really happy. Then it was crazy. The next day she gives me a call and she said, I'm at uh, this one church and I'm going to lay my life down on the altar. I'm giving my life to the Lord. I want to get baptized today. I'm, I'm quitting being bisexual. I'm quitting this. I'm quitting drugs. I'm quitting all that stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, I love it when we go out and there's an explosion of miracles and next you know like 10 people get healed back to back that's like so epic but it's just as important to stop for the one to love to spend time with them and every single person here has people in their lives that need to encounter god's love in a real way amen Amen. that's the gospel that's the gospel that's as simplified as i could get it right there yeah so i'm gonna let chelsea share something real quick because she had an epic revelation on uh, 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. 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 
it's funny before he's like first Corinthians 13 I kept hearing that I was like I knew I was gonna get up and share this with you guys Praise God. so this has been one of my favorite you know my favorite passages and they often use it in weddings and it's a passage about love and when I was younger I used to think like this is how we're supposed to love people we're supposed to be you know patient and kind and not envy we're supposed to you know just we're supposed to try to love people like God loves people and then um, one day Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said you know I am love this is how I love you and this just like rocked wow. my world so I'm gonna read this to you guys and that just imagine God you know reading this to you saying this is this is how I love you God suffers long he is kind, he does not envy, he does not parade himself, he is not puffed up, he does not behave rudely, he does not seek his own, he is not provoked, he thinks no evil, he does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices with the truth. He bears all things, he believes all things, he hopes all things, and he endures all things. He never fails. Mm. So, it's a different version that I'm used to reading, so it's throwing me off. But God is patient with us. He's kind. Yeah. He, he doesn't envy, he doesn't boast, he isn't rude, he isn't proud, he isn't self-seeking. He keeps no records of wrongs. And just think about that, like, the Lord keeps no record of wrongs. Like, when He looks at you, He doesn't remember your iniquity. He looks at you, you have a clean slate with the Lord. You're, you know, right now, as you are right now, you are completely, completely clean and pure before the Lord just because of His blood. Amen. Just because of what He did. We never work our way toward the Lord. The good works in our life flow from that place. So we believe what he says about us. We believe that we are completely loved by him. That right now, right where you are, you are completely loved by God. And there's no separation between God and you. Nothing. There's no veil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want to pray for you guys. Lord, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your love, God. Thank you. I thank you for your love, that you love us so completely. You love us so, so completely, God, that there is nothing in our lives that separates us from you. There is no sin. There is no past sin. There is no present sin. There is no future sin. Nothing in our lives can separate us from your great love, God. And Lord, I thank you that you're passionate about each one of us, God. You have this passionate love, Lord, where you feel love for us. Thank you, That's Father. amazing. I just thank you so much, God. And I pray for every single person here, Lord, that they would just experience the height, the depth, the width of your love, God. That you would take each person in this place, Lord, to deeper revelations of how much you love them, how much you feel love for them, Lord. You are, I thank you, God, that you're joyful. You are so happy. You're not disappointed. You are happy. You are joyful over each one of us. And I thank you for that, God, that you're in a good mood. <laughs> I thank you, God, that you're in a good mood all the time, God, and that you love us and you rejoice over us, Lord. So I just pray, Lord, that this revelation would just sink into our hearts, God, and that we begin to live from a place, Lord. Live from a place of believing your love for us, believing that your blood covers every sin, God, that there is no separation from us. And Lord, let that, let that love just heal our hearts, God. And let that love just consume our lives and fill us, God. And I just pray that that love would just start to overflow, God. That every person here, Lord, would just be a stream of that love, God. And that you would just overflow, Lord, onto everyone around them, everywhere they go, God. I just thank you for these people, Lord. I thank you for their hearts, God. I just thank you for this congregation, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.